So I've gotten a good bit of questions on the actual setup that's in the Escalade. So I'm gonna do a series of videos kind of explaining that stuff and you know the design cues, my thought processes and all that. And first we're gonna start with the first thing you see when you look at the front of it, and that is the intercooler. The intercooler on this thing is actually one that I built myself. It is two separate cores. They're horizontal cores, each rated conservatively to handle a thousand horsepower. And what I did is I turned them straight up, stuck them together so that it became one big vertical core. And they've been awesome. Like the highest IAT I've ever seen is like 140 down the track. Like it, my IAT actually drops when I start to make a pass because the air starts flowing and getting the hot engine bay air out. Because my turbo is literally sucking air from right behind the radiator. Like it's not, it's not great at all. Pop the hood here so you can see a little better. I've been daily driving this thing for like a week and a half, so it's really dirty right now. But my air intake scenario was not the best for cold air, but this thing just knocks it out of the park. But the design of it is no accident. When you look down here, you can see that the logo is placed well within the ambience of everything else. And that's on purpose too. Uh, the, the Zen tanks, I made those. And they slope down at the same angle that the headlight does at the top. So your, your view just kind of all converges on that center point right to the badge. And then from the badge, you kind of follow down and you come back up to these and you go around those or you kind of come like this and go like that. You know, it's like, it's, it's designed to keep your eyes moving in a circle. Those, those charge pipes didn't need to be oriented like that. But as I was making the pipes, I took, put the bumper on, took it off, put it on, took it off like 80,000 times to kind of see what it would look like through the grill because that was really important to me. And that's what I came up with. I felt that it, it, just, it just flowed really well. Like that looks really freaking cool. And I think it's kind of a staple of the image of this thing, really. If I painted it black, it wouldn't look half as cool poking through the grill like that not even close that's all symmetrical too and here's this specific angle i was talking about right there i actually use an angle finder to kind of place that and then match it on here just to it keeps your eyes on the same plane and then once i had the end tanks made i didn't have the intercooler mounted yet or the bottom made so i had i had boxes under there to mock it up and I just kind of stacked them and you know, played with the height a little bit to see where the intercooler would land in relation to the logo on the grill. So it was like positioned well. I wanted it to be high enough that it got adequate airflow because the intercooler actually comes down to like right there, but there was only so high I could go with actually being, you know, with the other stuff in here. And uh, you could see the brackets I kind of made in there. I'll throw in some pictures. I used two mounting like bosses in the factory core support. And I welded ears onto it also for the back side of the, the intercooler tanks. And I made uh, mounting bosses that I welded to the intercooler on a lathe, like drilled and tapped them. So this intercooler is mounted in six places. Like you could literally stand on this thing, you could bang on it, it's not going to move. And it is a, it's a freaking unit. The cores are four and a half inches thick. Now I made the intercooler out of cardboard before I actually like made it for real, to, for mock-up purposes, to like see how thick it could be and still fit behind the bumper, how tall it could be and still fit behind the bumper, all that stuff. And once I made my cardboard template as physically large as I could fit in there, then I went on to CSF's website, looked at their list of uh, part numbers and sizes and all that and found what I could build within the dimensions that I had deemed usable from my cardboard template. So when I got everything, I knew it was gonna fit and I knew that it was going to be the biggest it could possibly be for the space that I had to use. Just the intercooler itself was a definite project that took me several days to do, probably like a week and a half of you know tinkering on after class and what on weekends and whatnot because you know it, it was a lot of work getting the tanks like getting the cores figuring out where they're going to go making the tanks 
like making the tank and then making this little piece to stick off of it, welding the flange on there, all that stuff, making sure it was exactly perfect. And underneath, you know, both of those tanks taper down and feed into one outlet that's on the back face of the intercooler and this charge pipe connects there. You can see it just goes right into the base of the intercooler that way. So that's pretty much the gist of that. Uh, in a future video, I'll go over the turbocharger placement, downpipe orientation, why the headers look the way they look, all that stuff, because nothing in here was done by accident. Everything was thought out methodically just as much, if not more so, than copying the angle from the headlights to the intercooler tank. Like, I did not skip anything when it came to the visual composition of this engine bay. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those. And, you know, as always with my channel, you're not totally sure what you're gonna get. If it's gonna be car stuff, fabricating stuff, freaking RVs, broken RVs, and, you know, interviews the people that I like, you know, learn how they work, filming what I do. And if you like it, you do. If you don't, I'm not for you. That's totally cool. But if you're about it, I appreciate you.